What is going on, Trash Talkers? We're back with another episode for you. Today's video, we're going to give you our week four predictions for the NFL. All that and much more coming your way right now. All right, Nick, week four is upon us, and we have some of the most intriguing matchups that we have seen throughout the entire NFL season so far. And it starts off with an absolute banger. What are you expecting to see from the Carolina Panthers visiting the Dallas Cowboys? Yeah, this is going to be a really good game. You have the undefeated Carolina Panthers sitting at 3-0, and head to Dallas, taking on the 2-1 and Dallas Cowboys. This is going to be a very good game. This is going to be a very high-scoring game. I expect that both defenses pretty much can do nothing against these high-powered offenses. And, you know, you're going to say, oh, well, CMC's not there. Well, I mean, Chuba Hubbard is still a very adequate running back out of the backfield. He may not be the best rusher, but I think that he's going to have a lot of targets out of the backfield. I think that he's going to get a lot of attempts there. And good luck to the Dallas Cowboys linebackers trying to stop him because he is quite the athlete. Nonetheless, I really like this matchup. I'm really focused on both of these offenses and Sam Darnold versus Dak Prescott, who can get the job done in the end. And I think Dak Prescott and this offense that we just saw in that Monday night game against the Eagles, they are locked, loaded, and ready to go. There is not many defenses getting in their way right now. It doesn't matter if they don't have Michael Gallup. They, they got that two-headed monster running back. CeeDee Lamb is there, Amari Cooper. I, I really like the Dallas Cowboys in this one, and I think that's why they're going to get a big home victory against the Carolina Panthers. Starting off with an intriguing matchup there, but we also move into the Cleveland Browns visiting the Minnesota Vikings. And the Cleveland Browns have shown the NFL that they are not to be messed with. Miles Garrett, Jadavion Clowney, this defense is for real. The back end has held up against some of the better wide receivers and better receiving options that the NFL has to offer. And on top of that, their offense, now with Odell Beckham Jr. back into the fold, has really shown a propensity to be a Swiss Army knife. They can kill you on the ground with two running backs, Kareem Hunt and Nick Chubb, going off. Or they can beat you through the air with their tight ends and their wide receivers. And, you know, Baker Mayfield not turning the ball over as much as he used to. Cleveland has really upped their expectations and what they bring to the table. The Minnesota Vikings are still trying to find their footing as of right now. I don't know if Dalvin Cook's going to be playing in this game as of right now. And, you know, Alexander Madison looked great, but he also didn't play that great of a competition. So at the end of the day, I think the Cleveland Browns are just a better team in the NFL right now, in the landscape of the NFL right now. And uh, at the end of the day, I have the Cleveland Browns taking this game. In our next one o'clock matchup, we have the Detroit Lions heading to the Chicago Bears. Wow, what a bad game this is going to be. This is just terrible. Watch another one o'clock game, please. The Detroit Lions have looked fairly solid in their game so far against the 49ers, the Baltimore Ravens last week. I, I think that they need to be given more credit than their record shows. And I think that the Chicago Bears need to be given less credit. And hopefully after this game, Matt Nagy gets fired. We all need that to happen. The Detroit Lions, they've been on the cusp of that win they got lucky with a few Hollywood Brown uh, misses, and then they got unlucky with the Justin Tucker t uh, field goal. But I do think the Detroit Lions have it in them to get the, the win this week. I think that they are the stronger team. Dan Campbell is a much better coach than I thought he would be, and I have to apologize for that. But I really believe in the Detroit Lions this week on the road, and they will get a big first victory against the Chicago Bears. Yeah, I mean, the Detroit Lions have definitely shocked us this year. But another team that shocked us? The Houston Texans and the Houston Texans go on the road to Buffalo to take on the Bills. And obviously the Bills Mafia is no joke. They have to be accounted for in any home game that the Bills have. But Houston has really surprised us with Davis Mills in this offense. And even when Terod Taylor was in there, I, I was kind of keeping my eye on them saying, this is not the team that I expected. But we, we saw a lot of things come from Brandon Cooks in this offense. And on defense, they're gating pressure. They're stopping people on third down. They're doing the job they need to do. 
Unfortunately, they run into the buzzsaw that is the Buffalo Bills right now. And the Buffalo Bills, with back-to-back weeks of putting up over 40 points on their opponent, it's not going to stop now. The Bills are at home at the end of September where it's starting to get cold up in Buffalo. Orchard Park is going to be loud. It is going to be rocking. And the Buffalo Bills will come out on top in a very easy victory. It's going to be a very easy win for the Buffalo Bills, but a much tougher matchup. The Indianapolis Colts headed to Miami to face off against the Dolphins. No Tua this week. He's still on IR. But Jacoby Brissett proved a lot. He proved that he's not just a backup. He's a capable starter and while your quarterback is hurt. And I think Jacoby Brissett is going to continue to improve upon that game against the Raiders. I think that he he really liked working with Jalen Waddell and the, his new weapon, Will Fuller, and Devonta Parker. So much talent on this offense for the Miami Dolphins. We, we've seen the strength of the Colts struggle against offenses like this, like we saw against the Tennessee Titans last week. And that is the strength of the Colts. When you look at the offense, there's nothing there. And the Miami defense is very solid. They're going to have a very easy time stopping the Indianapolis Colts. All you have to do is stop Michael Pittman and stop Jonathan Taylor. Carson Wentz is going to fail you the rest of the time. I really like the Miami Dolphins this one. I think Jacoby Brissett is going to play a very good game, and I think it's going to it's about time that Jacoby Brissett gets some respect put on his name. I like Miami against the Colts. You know what it's about time for? The Kansas City Chiefs to start acting like the team that they are supposed to be. And the Chiefs go on the road to the Philadelphia Eagles who just got absolutely knocked around like they didn't even belong in the NFL by the Dallas Cowboys. Now the Kansas City Chiefs come in with an even more potent and high-powered offense. Josh Gordon recently added to the mix, so you have another weapon that you have to account for on top of Tyreek Hill and Travis Kelsey. Patrick Mahomes with his electric arm and his ability to scramble out of the pocket. Everything's been said about the Chiefs that I, I could go through, but the fact of the matter is they're sitting at one and two. They are not happy that they are at the bottom of their division behind the likes of the Broncos, the Raiders, and the Chargers who just beat them last week. It's leaving a sour taste in Patrick Mahomes' mouth. It's leaving a sour taste in Andy Reid's mouth. And I think that they are primed for vengeance here. I think the Kansas City Chiefs are ready to take out all of their anger and frustrations, and it's coming at the expense of the Philadelphia Eagles. I, I think Jalen Hurts looked pretty decent against the Cowboys. I think that their their defense really needs to step up, and they, they need to kind of work out some things, but nonetheless, the Kansas City Chiefs are going to absolutely roll over the Eagles. Without a doubt. Up next, we have the New York Giants headed to New Orleans to face the Saints. Yes, this is the New Orleans Saints' first legitimate home game in their home state. This is a very big game for them, a big game for Jameis Winston. I'm taking the upset. I really believe in the New York Giants, and I, I want to put that out there first because I want to explain why. The New York Giants offense with Kenny Galladay and Sterling Shepard and Darius Slayton, and then you got Saquon Barkley. These guys have been slow to start. But now Saquon Barkley is getting going. Kenny Galladay is starting to get into the mix. Sterling Shepard is a big breakout this year. And Daniel Jones looks fantastic leading the helm. On defense, they have not held up their side of the bargain. Yes, they were out Blake Martinez, one of their best linebackers last week. And he is expected to be back. I really like this team through and through. I believe in this team. And when you look at the New Orleans Saints... When they have pressure on them, especially Jameis Winston, when they have pressure on them, they do not perform. They had a big game against the Packers in week one, and then they faced their division rival, the Carolina Panthers, and got absolutely blown out in week two. When the pressure is on them, when when they have a, you know smooth sailing to an easy victory, then that's when they fail you the most. You're going to see the Giants offense take shape against the New Orleans Saints defense. They faced the New England Patriots last week and had a very easy time with the running backs getting hurt, with the, the easy interceptions and Mac Jones not playing very well. This is not going to be the same case. Joe Judge is going to have his team ready to go. And I just believe that this is going to be a very big upset for the New York Giants. They are going to get a big victory over the Saints at home. I, I did not expect that at all. In fact, uh, you know, I, I thought I was going to be the only one with the upsets because in the Tennessee Titans versus the New York Jets, the, the word upset doesn't even come close to my mind. The New York Jets have looked absolutely anemic. They cannot do anything against 
even remotely potent defenses in the NFL. And at this point, I'm questioning whether Zach Wilson was really the best way for this franchise to move or whether they should have kept Sam Darnold and just brought pieces around him to to fix up this offense. Nonetheless, this is where the New York Jets are. And with 15 sacks under his belt, it doesn't look like Zach Wilson or now Sack Wilson is really going to be able to do too much here. I think the Tennessee Titans are going to pin their ears back and really pressure this guy. I expect a big game from Bud Dupree. Mike Vrabel knows that the offensive line is hurting for the Jets, and he doesn't care. He is going to come full throttle on these guys. I think it's going to be a closer game than we expect, but I still believe the Tennessee Titans will come out on top. You think it might be close, but the Jets haven't scored a touchdown in two games. I think they're going to make it three this week. In our next matchup, a much better matchup, the Washington football team faces the Atlanta Falcons in Atlanta. Look, I mean, the Washington football team, they, they've had their ups and downs. The defense has really not played up to their level. And Taylor Heineke has looked fairly decent, but he's definitely made his mistakes. And the offensive weapons around him are just not doing the job right now. For the Atlanta Falcons, they I mean, they have some pieces, but they're not putting it together. Kyle Pitts, an absolute shame right now. I, I really can't understand what's going on right there. Arthur Smith's really got to get this team under control. And they got a nice win against the Giants, but I just don't think they keep it up because that Washington defense, they are ready to come back from that bad loss against the Buffalo Bills. They're ready to for some redemption, and who better than a very easy target like the Atlanta Falcons. I think this is going to be a very easy game, a blowout victory for the Washington football team. In our next matchup, we have the Arizona Cardinals visiting the Los Angeles Rams in what is going to be one of the most high-powered games that we see all season long. We thought that the Rams had a tough game with the Buccaneers visiting last week. No, sir. With the Arizona Cardinals coming in at 3-0, and this is a divisional matchup for the ages. The Cardinals are here, and they're here to stay. The Rams are here, and they are here to stay. This is going to help determine the entire landscape of the NFC and possibly who wins this division. I mean, we're taking a look at two 3-0 and teams battling it out. Kyler Murray, Matthew Stafford, Cooper Cup. DeAndre Hopkins. I mean, these guys are going to absolutely go toe-to-toe -to -toe with each other. Now, on the defensive side of the ball, you have Jalen Ramsey and J.J. Watt. There's a ton of firepower on both sides of the ball for both of these teams. But when it's all said and done, you have to go to the most reliable with the team that has been there and done it before. And I'm taking Sean McVay's experience over Cliff Kingsbury's final understanding of how this all works and, and got, getting to this point, I believe that the Los Angeles Rams not only have shown that they're the best offense, but they are a top five defense. And when you have both of those things at your disposal, I think you are an absolute wrecking ball. And it doesn't matter whether you're 3-0 and or 0-3, you're going to see the same fate. The Los Angeles Rams will come out on top against the Arizona Cardinals. But that's not the only NFC West divisional matchup as we have the Seattle Seahawks headed to Levi Stadium taking on the San Francisco 49ers. This is going to be a very good game. These games are always very good between the Seahawks and the 49ers. Doesn't matter if the Seahawks defense, it doesn't exist. This is going to be a lot more competitive than we expect. The 49ers showed that they do have some weaknesses against the Packers that, you know, they can get creative on offense, but on defense, they have some young secondary players that just aren't able to keep up with some big guys. And when you look at DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett, I mean, these are going to be some guys that are, are tough to cover. I really think that the Seattle Seahawks offense will put up a good fight. I think that the 49ers and Jimmy Garoppolo are going to put up a ton of points. But when you look at these defenses, I, I just think the 49ers have the slight edge and they are going to end up scraping this one out. When you look at the defenses for both teams, you, you look at the Seahawks and you see Bobby Wagner and you see Jamal Adams, but... There really is nobody else. Yeah, you got Quandre Diggs, who people want to overhype. And you've got some young guys on the defensive line like LJ Fort. But that's really it. Nothing really to, to write home about. On the 49ers side, though, you've got Arik Armstead. You've got D Ford. You've got Nick Bosa. Fred Warner. I mean, they Jimmy Ward. There are so many guys that they have to work with that the Seahawks defense pales in comparison to the 49ers. It's apples and oranges. It's completely different. And the Seattle Seahawks offense is just overall going to have a tougher time scoring points. I do believe it will be close, but I am taking the 49ers in this divisional matchup. 
I mean, you talked about scraping by, but you know who scraped by last week? The Baltimore Ravens. Justin Tucker getting them out of a sticky situation against the Detroit Lions on a record-breaking 66-yard field goal in Detroit. Not in Denver, not in Mexico City, in Detroit. I, I mean... Kudos to Justin Tucker. He deserves all the credit in the world. But the Baltimore Ravens have shown that they have some flaws, especially with all of the injuries that are starting to mount up on this team. Hollywood Brown, you know, you can only hide who you are for so long. We saw a little bit of what we have become accustomed to with him dropping footballs against the Lions. Now they go up against the Denver Broncos, who have a much more potent defense. On top of that, the offense for the Broncos is much better, much more stout than the Lions have to offer. Baltimore barely scraped by in Detroit. I think the Denver Broncos are going to be able to take advantage of them. Teddy Bridgewater has been the calming presence that they needed at the quarterback position. Even though they did lose... Jerry Judy, they still have Court and Sutton. Even though they did lose KJ Hamler, they still have Tim Patrick. There is no shortage of weapons for this team. Noah Fant is still here. Javante Williams has been the guy they expected him to be. Melvin Gordon coming out strong. This is a full-fledged team, and sitting at 3-0, and the Denver Broncos are ready to show exactly why they belong in the upper echelon of the NFL. They're going to take on the Baltimore Ravens, and I believe they're going to make a name for themselves by beating them in this matchup. The Denver Broncos are on the rise, and the Pittsburgh Steelers are on the down. The Pittsburgh Steelers are headed to Green Bay this week. In a very disappointing matchup. On paper, it looks fantastic. But then when you look at Big Ben and, well, him tripping over himself, that pretty much says it all. The The Pittsburgh offense is falling apart very fast. You've got Deontay Johnson hurt. Chase Claypool's banged up but going to play. And looks like Juju Smith-Schuster might miss this contest as well. That really leaves a banged up, like I said, banged up Chase Claypool and then Najee Harris I just don't have any faith in this Pittsburgh offense on defense. Who knows if TJ Watt's going to play and is it really going to make a difference against Aaron Rodgers? I, I don't think so. Aaron Rodgers, Aaron Jones, Devontae Adams, these guys are just going to put up points when they feel like it. The defense for the Packers doesn't have to do much. They're not the best, but they don't have to be the best in this contest. It's going to be a very, very easy, smooth victory for the Green Bay Packers at home. You know, Devontae Adams said he was built different after that hit that he suffered at the hands of Jimmy Ward. You know who else is built different? Tom Brady. Obviously the GOAT. Tom Brady, the greatest quarterback of all time. And uh, he's got some random game where he goes up to some northeastern stadium. Oh, yeah. Making his return, his inevitable return to Foxborough, to Gillette Stadium, taking on Bill Belichick and the New England Patriots. And listen... Everybody wants to hype up this game, but let's call it as it is. Tom Brady is on a team that is definitely a possibility to represent for the Super Bowl, and the Patriots are still trying to figure out how to get their rookie quarterback going, getting this offense going with all their young talent. They're completely different situations here. Bill Belichick has a great defense. He's done a great job coaching up this team. But the, the headlines are much better than the actual game is going to be. Tom Brady, he's going to get his vengeance here. He's going to become one of only three quarterbacks to have defeated all 32 NFL teams. And at this point, I believe that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are going to have a very easy victory. I, I, I don't see much more other than, you know, these are great headlines and it's going to make for a great storyline all throughout Sunday Night Football. But it doesn't matter. Tom Brady's going to walk out of Gillette Stadium one more time as a victor. It's going to be a very tough game for me to watch, but I do have Monday Night Football to look forward to, thankfully, and it is a very good game. The Las Vegas Raiders headed to their division rival, the Los Angeles Chargers, going to be a very, very fun matchup to watch. One of the better matchups we've seen in primetime. We've gotten lucky with competitive games, but this is going to definitely deliver. The Los Angeles Chargers coming off of that massive victory over their other, other divisional rival, the Kansas City Chiefs. Justin Herbert looking unbelievable. Four touchdowns against them. The Raiders' defense, they look very good right now. They look very stout. That pass rush is unbelievable, and it's going to really test both teams. Can the Raiders put up the points they've been doing? Can they keep the Cinderella story alive, or are the Chargers going to put them in their place? Well, 
I'll, since Austin Eckler has come back and, and he's healthy, this offense looks very different. Mike Williams, him being healthy, makes his team very different. Keenan Allen doesn't even need to be a factor because these guys are playing at such an elite level right now. And when you look at the Raiders, they, they, they're just getting banged up a little bit each week, and, and that's adding up already in week four. Their secondary is, is going to be missing some guys, and I think that Justin Herper is ready to expose whoever's replacing them. It, it's going to be a big air attack for the Chargers. It's going to be a big air attack from the Raiders, as it always is. But I think at the end of the day, the Chargers are just the better team. Both defenses, I'll, I'll negate them. I think they're, they're pretty much on par with each other but on offense I think Justin Herbert clear and away better than Derek Carr and the receivers for the Los Angeles Chargers by far and away better than what the Raiders have to offer this is going to be an intriguing matchup for sure and I, I like the Chargers as well but Monday night football always has some sort of excitement to it and with this being a divisional matchup you knew that you know these two teams are going to play each other extremely well I'm excited for this and uh you know I also have the Chargers but I, I really like what this entire matchup has to offer all right well I want to hear from you guys let us know in the comments down below which teams you have winning which teams you have losing and uh, let us know if you think we got any of them wrong i want to hear from you guys all right well that'll be all for now thank you all for watching be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already hit that notification bell we go live every single day that'll be all peace and love